Tonight on Oregon Art Beat, she says anyone can learn the marimba, and my Linda King is proving it with the youngsters at Buckman School. Maritime painter Dutch Mostert is preserving the history of Oregon's working maritime boats through his moody, detailed watercolors. And quilt historian Mary Bywater Cross takes her passion for wool and makes unusual quilts. Oregon Art Beat is next. Support for Oregon Art Beat provided by the James F. and Marion L. Miller Foundation, the Kinsman Foundation, and viewers like you. Good evening, I'm Jeff Douglas, along with Casey Cowan. Welcome to Oregon Art Beat. What a fun show we have for you tonight. <laughs> Painting, crafting, and music. And we'll start with the music, because this particular kind of music always makes me smile and tap my toes. Oh, me too. But how many of us as children had to suffer through music lessons? Yeah, me too. Just struggling to make a decent sound on the trumpet or clarinet or the violin. For some kids, it can be just too hard, and they often give up on music. But more and more schools are discovering there's a great instrument that all children can learn and enjoy. Ruby Dude, you ready on the bass? Jake. These youngsters have only been playing the marimba for a few months. Although instructor My Linda King has taught marimba at several other schools, the program is relatively new at Buckman Elementary. My Linda, whose daughter attends Buckman, felt the music program there needed a boost. The instrumental music from the time she started till now just slowly dribbled away to where there's nothing at the school for instrumental music. And here I am running around to all these other schools doing these marimba bands and I thought, this is the perfect place for a marimba band. Bass and baritone, we're going to try to play it from the beginning. Two, three. That my Linda plays the marimba at all is kind of a fluke. She always played the piano. I went to folk life in Seattle and um, was in, saw a lot of marimba bands play, and I had never seen one before, and I was pretty fascinated. It was like uh, my first uh, experience with African music and marimba. And I thought, well, that's really cool, and admired it from a distance, and came back to Portland, and I was in Artichoke Music putting up flyers for my piano accompanying business, and I saw a little hand-torn note that said, Boca Marimba looking for a new member. And if I had not just been to Folk Life and seen it, I probably would have never looked at it twice. So she joined Boca Marimba and began to shift her skills from the piano to the marimba. That was actually easy at first because the marimba is like the white keys of a piano. So to me, spatially, I was used to negotiating a keyboard and that's one of the reasons I think Boca Marimba took me in is I was able to learn parts very quickly. And um, it was only after we started getting into deeper, more traditional music that my brain got a little more challenged. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Soon, others began to ask her to teach them how to play. Go to the name of the positions. This is her Monday night group. Marimba is similar to a xylophone, but there are differences. A xylophone is the Western term. It's also usually metal. Marimba is always wooden, and there are Western-style marimbas that are chromatic, but I think what makes the African marimba African, though, is the buzzers. That little piece of cellophane is what's creating the buzz.
Listen carefully and you can hear the buzzing. A lot of people when they're hearing a marimba band playing, they'll keep looking around saying, who's singing, who's singing? And they don't see anyone singing and it's actually the marimba creating the sound of a human voice through the uh, resonator tubes. There are different sizes of marimbas to give a band a wider range of pitch. So this is a soprano marimba. It's the highest range in the band. And we usually have three of these. Some bands might have two, some bands might have four. And the lead melody, the main tune of the song is usually played on a soprano like this. This is the bass marimba, every kid's favorite. This is my favorite one. This is the baritone marimba, um, a little smaller than the bass and uh, bigger than a tenor. the tone of it. Um, and when you play something uh, like that one. But when you see adults playing complex songs together, you have to wonder, just how easy is it for children to learn? Turns out, it's a perfect instrument for beginning music students. It's not like a clarinet or a violin where you spend the first year, you know, driving everyone from the room, just trying to get a good tone. I mean, that's what makes it a good school instrument, too. You go up, you pick up a stick, you hit the key, beautiful sound. Yeah. Kids like to hit things. It's really hard to be in a band or an orchestra with little kids, if you think about it. That the amount of coordination that that takes, but you can get a big group of instruments, marimbas together, and give everybody the same weapon, and we can all play together. And, and, and you know, you can give me just about any group of kids, and in half an hour, I've got them playing something together. We have these things called signals, and that's how you know that the end of the song is coming. And we all end together. You know how great it sounds when a song ends, boom, and there's nothing? Yeah, that's what we want. We're gonna have to show Eddie a one-handed part now. What'd you do, break your collarbone? No, I fractured. Oh, fractured. I'm gonna click the rhythm with my sticks while we play. Even though it's slow for some of you, for people on the big instruments, it's not so easy. So let's keep it at the same tempo, otherwise it doesn't really sound like music, okay? So the kids are enthusiastic, to say the least. Just knowing that I can play this instrument, and I love like telling everybody that I can play that huge bass and my cool parts and stuff. And it's just fun knowing I do something that not everybody else does. I actually didn't really want to do it because my mom just wanted me to sign me up for something and I thought I would be like all boring and blah because it didn't sound fun to me. Then when I tried it, like the first day, I picked up on, on the bass um, really fast and I just had so much fun learning the new part and I went home like, Mom, I love marimba! Yay! Parents love it too. Two of Anna Rockhill's children take classes. And what have you seen it do for them? Oh, I mean, both of them wake up in the morning, bum, ba -dum, you know, playing on their beds. I mean, and the, the music's in our house uh, all the time. It's, it's around. So, yeah, it's great. Being able to make real music so quickly is what keeps youngsters interested in the marimba. And my Linda makes it her goal to see that every student of any age succeeds.
I never give up on anybody. Um, one thing that's really nice about the music is a song, when it's performed, has many different parts that all fit together. Some parts can be very easy. Some parts can be very difficult. If I see a part is too hard for a particular kid, I can change it. It can still fit in the song and help the music. But I can simplify. If a part's too easy, I can make it harder. So I have never once told a kid, I'm sorry, you can't play marimba, because <laughs> I think every kid can. There are waiting lists to get into my Linda's classes, but if you'd like to know more about her classes and recitals, visit her website, which, because it's kind of long, we will post on our website, opb.org slash artbeat. If you're interested in finding out more about Buckman, an arts magnet school, it's really terrific, visit their website, buckmanelementary.org. Now, a little more marimba to take us out tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good night. <laughs> So let's talk about how you count it. Support for Oregon Art Beat provided by the James F. and Marion L. Miller Foundation, the Kinsman Foundation, and viewers like you 